If you threw a dinner party in the 80s, there were a few things you had to do before the guests arrived. Put the prawn into your cocktail, put the beef into your wellington, and if this investigator's report is anything to go by, put your home brand products into fancier packaging. With Perrier, about five times the price of no frills, it's hardly surprising that some resort to sleight of hand. See, when private label products first hit the shelves, the bland packaging and questionable quality put a lot of people off. Some shoppers obviously see generics as bargains, and in many instances coming from the same production lines as the major brand names. Others steer clear on the basis that because generics are cheap, they're nasty. These days, things are different, mostly. Now, private label products look just like regular branded products, like a lot like branded products. Mm, great wine, thank you. And they're trying to shake that cheap and nasty image. Each chip delivers taste, freshness and crunch, with all ingredients selected and tested by chefs and respected Woolworth selectors like me. So there's no shame in serving up home brand anymore. Well, less shame. In fact, private label products now account for about a quarter of all grocery sales in Australia. And by 2020, it's expected that share will be more than a third. Mm, very classy. Consumers increasingly see them as acceptable alternatives to brands, except for some reason when it comes to things like toilet paper and cereal. Uh, yes, only the softest touch for my breakfast and the nuttiest crunch for my butt. No, wait, wait, I... So, is this shift to private labels good or bad for consumers? Well, that depends on how you look at it. Private label products are about 30% cheaper than branded ones. Mm. And consumers recently voted home brands their favourite in five out of eight staple categories. I preferred it when we talked about real estate. Even professional judges sometimes rate them highly. Like when a $5 LD wine won an award at the Sydney International Wine Festival last year. Outstanding. Or when a Coles cheddar cheese won champion of pretty much everything at some other yummiest food show. Exquisite afternoons of cheese. And while it's great that being a wanker has become more affordable, many people still wonder... Oh, how are you going to keep the car and come? <laughs> I was referring to the effect of private labels on competition. Now, we asked Coles and Woolworths how many branded products they've stopped selling in the last few years, and they wouldn't tell us. But Coles was happy to tell their own analysts that their range will be cut by up to 15%. Though they'd have to cut a lot more than that to get anywhere close to Aldi, which only has about one-tenth the number of products per store, with 90% of those being private labels. I actually have to go to the toilet. The thing is, while Coles and Woolies have been expanding their private label ranges, they've been making suppliers fight for the remaining space, squeezing some brands off the shelves entirely. In the industry, this practice is known as cliffing, for obvious reasons. That's why you won't find Green Seas tuna or McCormick spices on the shelves at Coles anymore, or Black Swan dips or All Sips lollies at Woolworths. So what happens to the suppliers once they've fallen off the edge? Yes, do tell. Well, that's not quite so clear-cut. When Woolworths stopped stocking Australian-made Allsep's lollies in 2011, they replaced them with cheaper Chinese imports. I'm appalled. But not, but not racist. At the time, there were concerns that Allsep's faced becoming another casualty in the unseen supermarket war. But today, Allsep's is a major manufacturer and supplier of private label confectionery to all the big retailers. Which means you can still buy their lollies, they're just not in an Allsep's packet. So in a sense, we're just not paying for fancy branding anymore. Uh, yes, well, you know what they say. Uh, all sips well, but ooh, cheese. Not necessarily. We still don't know whether all sips is better or worse off overall, because they, like almost all suppliers to the big supermarkets, won't talk publicly. Ah, uh, yes, well, that reminds me of oh. But becoming a private label supplier certainly didn't go well for one company Choice spoke to. Woolworths stopped selling our product because they said it was no longer wanted. But then they started selling the same product made by a multinational. How did that make you feel? Pretty annoyed. But then they said we could make the same product for their private label range. So we did. How did that make you feel? Good, except they made us pay millions for things like reformulating recipes and packaging and then deleting our range altogether. And how did that make you feel? How do you reckon? <laughs> 
So the outcomes for suppliers who get cliffed by the supermarkets are varied. And if you're worried about buying Australian made... Which I am. But not in a racist way. Then whether it's private label or a brand, you should look for the country of origin labelling. Oh, I think I saw something about that on the checkout once. You did! I came in like a... Oh, uh, no, not that. That's... Uh, uh. Not that one. This one. A kangaroo logo means the product's made or grown in Australia, and the bar chart shows you what percentage of the ingredients is Australian. And as far as industry competition goes, Europe found the profitability of its food processing industry unaffected by private labels, and the number of new products still increasing. OK! Time to go make it, baby! No! Oh, we're not doing this? That's fine. Do I buy private label or not? Oh, look, I don't know. That's your call. If you don't care about brand names, and want to get more bang for your bucks, then private labels probably make sense. And if you want to support Australian producers, then just look for the country of origin labelling. Well, we were even at dinner. <laughs> Here you go. And if you want to encourage competition, then just mix up where you shop. Honey, but, but I live here. Not anymore.